Coming up on Uncensored Talk. <laughs> and I said, you want it scarier? I'll give it to you scarier! <laughs> Karen chats with the voiceover actors from Power Rangers. I love it. Give it up for Jason Narby. <laughs> really, give it up. Louder. Give it up. Give me your wallets. And the incredible Jason Narvi is here. Bulk and Skull were funny. They were funny, but you guys brought the sexy. Spandex always puts you immediately in the sexy category, doesn't it? Sexy and awkward all at the same time. You're like, I'm sexy. I'm <laughs> right. And I am here on Uncensored Talk, and guess who I have with me? My heart, my darling, darling, darling. Jason Narvi is in the house. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you, my darling. I got three darlings. Darling, darling, darling. Yes. Darling, darling, darling. <laughs> and we're at Power Morphicon. How how are you? Uh, are we playing questions? Here? No, we're not playing statement. questions. That was a no! Yeah, I'm doing well. More for God is great. You know, it's more for God is, is kind of unique. You do a Comic Con, and sometimes you can kind of hide at a Comic Con. Yeah. Can't hide no. at Morphicon. Con. They're they're looking for you. Yeah, and and they're all over the hotel. They're all over the convention center. If you go to a restaurant, they're in the restaurant. It is like 24 hour personal appearance, yeah, right? You'll be at the urinal. It'll be sort of like, hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, Skull. Hey, Skull. How you doing? <laughs> hey, Aisha. Uh, I'm so uncomfortable. Did I tell you I got locked in a bathroom stall? And, and, and a fan had to save me. She actually had to help me open the door. You're so kidding me. Yeah. How does that happen? I don't know. Like, of all the stalls in Pasadena Convention Center, I get locked in the one that doesn't oh, open. Oh, good so. God. There's nothing yeah. more embarrassing. Now, you've won the hearts of many, many, many. You and Bulk. You right. and Polly won the hearts. Right, as baby. Yeah. Won the hearts as Bulk and Skull. And... I always wondered, how did you guys get your parts? I've heard many stories. Right. Well, okay, so Pauly was cast first, okay? I don't know the full casting process, but I can tell you how he became bulk. Um, he was cast for the original pilot, okay? Oh, cool. And, and uh, for those of you who know, a pilot is actually, you know, the, the thing that you use to sell to the network. Yeah. Many pi most pilots you'll never, ever see. Um, some series will say episode number one is called the pilot. That's not really true exactly. Right. Um, so he was in the original pilot, and I think he was like bully number two or bully number three. <laughs> and his, he had one line, which was, hey, man. And the guy that played Skull was actually the leader yeah. um, of the bullies. And he was actually really kind of intimidating. He was a stuntman named Bobby. He was a big guy and kind of, you know, mincy, kind of, you know, you're going to pay for this. Big time, I'm gonna find you in your sleep and cut your throat, Kimberly. Kind of got it. Like, <laughs> Holy sweet. Gee. Well, just what kids needed. It, just exactly <laughs> what they needed. Well, when they decided they needed the police to have more um, acting chops, I think um, Polly had already endeared himself to the producers by the time they actually started filming principal photography. Um, because Paulie's a wonderful actor. Like Absolutely. Said, he's a trained theater actor. He's got great comic timing. And aside from that, he can be menacing. So yes. he can do both. Um, so Skull became the sidekick. Well, unfortunately, Bobby wasn't great at being a sidekick because he was such a tough guy. So, and they decided to make the, those characters more funny. So that's... Yay. Yay. Aren't we happy they decided to do that? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> so that's what it was. So when they, they actually, only a few days before they started filming the show, they're like, this isn't going to work. Uh, I think Larry Litton was saying that he suggested that we should be like the bad guys in those old like 60s movies where they're really funny and they're not really, they're bad, but you don't want to see them come into any mischief. So right. they threw out a, a cat, they, they took a bunch of names that were on file. And I happened to have auditioned at one point for Billy way before that. And so they just happened to... Wow. Yeah, they, they, did you know this? I didn't know. Yeah, I went on a cattle call for... A, uh, they, were calling, uh, they were calling Power Rangers at the time, at least this is what they were telling the casting agents, they were calling it Phantoms. Right. That's what the audition was for, the nerd in Phantoms. And you go in and you stand in front of a camera and you go, hello, my name is Jason Arvey. I am with Kellerman Arletta Agency. <laughs> Next. Oh, I, I think I got that one. I felt really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and from Very that, inspired. you could give callbacks and all that stuff. Right. So what they did is they took my, my thing and they put it on file. So when they decided to get rid of Bobby, they, they went through their files, just five, five names, that was it. They took five uh, resumes and photos and went, 
uh, this guy, this guy, this guy, uh, that guy. I happen to be one of those guys. But this will show you where um, uh, luck and preparation come in because they didn't quite know what they wanted for the role. So I said, I wasn't going to let them figure it out. I was going to show them what they wanted. So I just threw all my improv skills at it. And Polly, and so the next day they, they're like, come back. Come, I want you to meet this man. <laughs> That's how all the producers they all, sound. They all sound like this. Here, here is, produ here is Ronald yeah. Hadar. I don't know how they for myself. <laughs> here is Jonathan Zahor. I'm very disappointed. And what about this. Shuki? Um, Shuki is, I, you know, I have this idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, Shuki, Shuki. You know, one of those genius types. So, yeah, genius. So, but that's the thing. Because Paulie and I had similar backgrounds and training, mm -hmm. Um, we just, we really paired up really well. Yeah. It was really miraculous, I gotta say. Well, tell me, because this is the thing. People ask me all the time. I get emails, Facebook messages, every, in person, especially here at the cons. How do I get into acting? How do I do this thing? And I keep telling them, go to class, go to yeah. class. It's something I really believe in. And like you said, you didn't wait for them to tell you what the part was going to be like. Exactly. You created the part, but because you were so trained. Exactly. You it, know, it, it's, about, it's about being prepared when the moment comes up. And if you think, hey, I've got some, I've got a look, or I've got skills, or I have an ambition, so now I'm going to go and audition for uh, the lead role in Terminator 5. Uh, <laughs> what makes you think you're going to get it? I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not like Arnold Schwarzenegger is a great actor or anything like that. Um, so when people say, I want to become an actor, there's two things they're really asking whether they realize it or not. One, how do I become the business person that, is, that we refer to as an actor? A person who knows you need to network, you need to uh, get headshots, you need to find an agent, you need to push yourself, you need to keep on social marketing. media. Marketing. Marketing, all that stuff. You're a marketing genius. Yes. The other question they're asking is, how do I take words like this and make them into something that a human being would say in a compelling manner? And how do I make a drama that we call a film or TV show actually come to fruition how do exactly. i do that so you need to go to school for that i'm sorry absolutely yeah you know i always say people go to work and they obviously get on the work training you go to school you learn how to read if you're an athlete you learn how to run yeah. you run every day mm -hmm. if you're an actor you got to train the muscle you absolutely yeah have. you can't and say i want to be an, Olymp an olympic gymnast and then just show up at the olympics and be like hi i'm here where's the bar i got this Oh, they I don't use this. a bar? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It'll never happen. No. So this is the thing. Because of that comedic genius, I really think that was one of the elements that made Power Rangers such a success. Because obviously you had all these teenagers. You had, you know, this amazing mix of people. You had superheroes. But you also had that funny. We had the funny. Like, Bulk and Skull were funny. They were funny, but you guys brought the sexy, which you I, well, too. I mean, come <laughs> on. I mean, yeah. Spandex yeah, always yeah, puts yeah, you yeah. immediately in the sexy category, That's doesn't right. it? Sexy <laughs> and awkward all at the same time. You're like, I'm sexy. I'm really vulnerable right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we had the funny. And what, what, when was the moment that you knew, okay, wait, I'm on the number one kids show in America. This oh. is amazing. Oh, God. Because uh, there was a lot of work. You guys were working on episodes. You were doing 15-hour days. And then all of a sudden, boom. Um, I, I think we found out at the set. I mean, I remember, you know, we were all excited that it was just on TV. You know, they were like, oh, look, there's commercials and our little dailies that we normally <laughs> only see. Um, so I think someone told us on the set that the ratings were through the roof. And we're like, Really? Yeah. Really? You know, I found out last night, we were at a dinner, and it was with a, a mix of people, and Tony Oliver was one of the people that were there, and he goes, he once saw that there was on the, um, uh, oh gosh, what is it, the, when they do the, the, the ratings, Nielsen of show, ratings, the Nielsen rating, it was a 99%, which meant 99% of the children in this one town that they surveyed were watching Power Rangers, and it was like the highest it ever, it broke records, and so they threw it out because they were like, ah, that can't, can't be, be true, right. but it really was. Yeah, and then they, I think if I recall the story, they went back and it was, and they went back and it was, and for us, I mean, you got to remember, we were still in the middle of filming the season, okay, and we weren't exactly, I mean, we were treated well, uh, but we weren't treated like royalty, no. we were treated like a bunch of young kids, <laughs> with, you know, 100 bucks a week or something criminal. <laughs> something so, very so criminal. So when we got those ratings, we went, oh, that's awesome, yeah, I'll go to the set now, you know, so afterwards, yeah. um, I remember Haim had a, had a sit-down meeting with everyone at the end of the season, which didn't come for another, I think, 
month or three weeks or something like that. He had to sit down in his office. And yeah. at that point, Sabant was not a big company. It was like two floors in Burbank, actually. Right. You know, and not yeah. a, a big building. No. Um, so he sat us all down, and he said, well, around this board table, we had these little stupid cups of ice cream. We're like, ooh, look at us. We have plastic cups ice of ice cream. cream. Ice cream in a boardroom. My God, this is ice cream. Oh, my God, we're stars. <laughs> But he did sit down with this almost like crisis intervention. We're like, guys, we uh, we got we have, we have a major hit on our hands here, <laughs> and um, I think um, there's going to be some big changes, and a lot of things are going to be thrown at you and us. That was my Haim Saban. Yeah. I know you couldn't I tell know. the difference between that and my Ronnie Hadar. It's all the same. <laughs> so that was when we really kind of knew that. Wow. Wow. You know, so, although, first time you go out and somebody does gives you the look, you know, the look, you're, you know, hi, I'll have a cheeseburger and I'll have a, and there's somebody. Right. You know, you're like, I'll have a cheeseburger, call, run, run, run and call the cops. <laughs> you run instantly call, feel naked. Here's a dime, go call the cops. <laughs> You instantly feel naked. Somebody asked me what it feels like to be recognized, and I told them, you instantly feel naked. Yeah, <laughs> you instantly feel yeah. like you have no clothes on because they're looking at you strangely. <laughs> we used to call it being in the fishbowl because you yeah. feel like you're swimming around and there's a cat just sitting above you. Just yeah. wait. <laughs> yeah. So this is the thing. A lot of people know, um, obviously, that you were on the TV show. So where can they find you? Because I know uh -huh. we want to see more of you. I know we get to see you. Right? But he needs a TV show. This is the thing. Where can we find you on social media? What shows do you have coming up? Right. Well, I'm terrible with social media. I'll just say it right now. So all that stuff about a business, uh, uh, an actor's a business person. The marketing? Person. Yeah, clearly I'm the worst. Because I, I've, been, I've been transitioning into directing. So I'm doing a lot of, doing a lot of stage work Yay. in Chicago, actually. So if you want to find me on social media, you should probably go to my Facebook page. I got a, a personal page, which is full. And I also have a fan page, which is Jason A. Narvi. Nice. Like it. Like it. You like will it. like it. Are you going to be at any upcoming conventions? Because I know these guys travel. I mean, I've seen people from London, from right. Germany, from Australia. Australia. When can they find you? Where can they okay, see you Okay, I will be, uh, Paulie and I will be in Birmingham uh, in, in February. We will be in, uh, at Lexington uh, Kentucky Con uh, in Birmingham Mark. in England, right? Yeah, not I'm sorry, Birmingham, Alabama. England, not our Birmingham. Let's show up the convention center in Birmingham. Like, yeah. What you want, we'll be boy? over across the pond. <laughs> so those are the, the two. Uh, the two. Oh, wait, and I also have one in like two or three weeks at, in Ventura. Oh, I'll be there. Oh, will We'll you? both be in Ventura in a couple weeks. Yay. There you go. Yay. So thank you so much. You're quite welcome. It's such a pleasure. It, it was my, my pleasure to be invited. My, my darling, guest. darling, yes, darling. My darling, 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 darling. Give it up for Jason Narvey. Really, give it up. Louder. Give it up. Give me your wallets. Stay tuned for more Uncensored Talk. Let's get talking. Welcome back to Uncensored Talk. This is Karen Ashley, and I've got some amazing people with me. These are the people who I feel like are the heart and soul of Power Rangers. These are some of the voices and some of the characters that made the Power Rangers work hard every week. From the this side, we're gonna. I want you to introduce yourself and tell me what I, was your involvement on the show. I'm Eddie Frierson. I did a zillion monsters throughout the years, but am best known for being the voice of Frax in Time Force. Give it up. And you, my darling, sir. I'm Robert Axelrod. I did the voice of Pinster and Lord Zed. Yes! Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he made us work very hard. And you, my love, you made us work hard as well. Ah, yes. That was my job. I, well, first of all, I was also Orbis and Sprocket and Mandy Locke. Yeah. But I was Rita! <laughs> and that's Barbara Goodson. And my love at the end, how are you? Mmm, I'm lovely. Yes. What time is it? It's morphin' time. It's morphin' time. <laughs> well, in that case, I want to kill them all. <laughs> you guys know Goldar. <laughs> Kerrigan Mayhan. Kerrigan Mayhan, ladies and gentlemen. And Yay. then there's the tortured soul of Magna Defender. The tortured, tortured soul. 
This is what I love about Power Rangers. We had superheroes, we had funny guys, but most of all, we had monsters. It's like the, your, your creativity and your voices are really, really, really... Oh, yeah, see, she's already trying to get me. See, you can't turn your back on this one. Your creativity really... <laughs> Don't let any clown in this place. Who's this clown? Hey, watch it on the other side, yeah. Goldie. Oh. And, and who are you, and, and what character did you obviously play? Um, I played a clown. <laughs> Not I played just any clown. kind of the clown on the first season of Power Rangers, and it was one of those episodes that were seen a lot. So here I am. So Goldie memorable. Clown. So memorable, but that's the thing. I think that was the cool thing. Like the monsters to me added the layers and the textures. And this is the thing I get asked so often, how do we become an actor? How do we become a voiceover actor? How did you guys get your part? What was the audition process like for each of you? Because I mean, you've got, you guys, like you said, you did lots of voices and, and this isn't like the only gig, but this is probably one of the, the, the biggest shows, but tell me. Let's start uh, down there. Start over here? Yeah. Well, myself, uh, when I first went into the audition, I was told it was called Power Rangers, having no idea what it was. Uh, my agent said it was something military karate. So, what the heck? I showed up in a green flight suit and went into a waiting room filled with clowns. Uh -huh. I, I thought I had blown it, and so then I went into the audition and uh, they asked, they looked disappointed at me and said, hey, uh, there's a clown audition. And I said, yeah, I'm a clown. I can blow the doors off any person in that waiting room. And then we talked for a while and uh, I came back for a call back at the studio, walked in in full makeup, did a little voice reading, juggled, still walked, and they said, okay, you got the part. Yay. That's Sweet. it. The rest Sweet. is history. Sweet. Yeah. Now, for me, it was a little different because Time Force was a little bit further along yeah. in the whole franchise. We've all known each other for 30 years. I mean, it's hard to believe. 40, it, Eddie. It, that's been that <laughs> long. 40. But, um, and we had worked together and all that. When the Power Rangers franchise was starting here, I wasn't available for, uh, for the audition. So I wasn't a part of that early thing. I was just called by who I said, hey, we've got a monster of the week for you. Okay, cool, it's a day's work, I, I went and did it. And so by the time Time Force came, around, uh, came along, Scott Page Pactor, he, he called me up and said, hey, I got this uh, robot um, that I think you'd be right for. So it was just kind of given to me. Wow. And that's how that happened. Nice. Yeah. Nice. What about you, Mr. Uh, well, first of I was just handed the role at the beginning of the show. The, the, uh, Tony Oliver just uh, picked me because he knew I could do the job. Uh, that's how all the, the beginning roles were given out on the voiceover side. Because we had been working for Saban for like nine, ten years before that. I found Saban in 1984. Wow. So this was nine years later. So, uh, but for Lord Zed, I had to audition three separate times. Uh, to get those, uh, all the people nodding their head yes. <laughs> I imagine there's, uh, you know, when you do an audition, they send you a recording of your voice up the line and there's like 10 producers and they're all bobbleheads. <laughs> they gotta get the, all the bobbleheads going up yeah, and down like yeah. this. In order get them all the in job. one accord. <laughs> <laughs> so it took me three auditions to get all the bobbleheads going up and down in the right direction. So uh, that's how I, that's the part of Lord's Nice. Day. And aren't we glad he did? Yeah. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Amazing. Sweet. Barbara, I have to admit, Rita was one of my faves. I oh, mean, she was, I, I really, I really honestly have to say that. What was that audition process like? Because she was so, I mean, she was obviously, there was a, a face to her. And I saw like an original episode from the Zoo Ranger. And your voice is completely different, actually much better and, and, and much more menacing. Um, so how did that go? Well, I was also given the role to begin with and told how to do it. And they said they wanted the Wicked Witch of the West, you know. Very, you know, standard. Yeah. Witchy, oh. 
But um, then they did this um, research thing where kids said, that's not so scary, so they fired me. <laughs> really? They fired me, yeah. You didn't know this? Yeah. I didn't know this, no. Oh, that's yeah. why I'm loving yeah, that. Great I'm story. This yeah, is, yeah. This is good stuff. And yeah. I said, uh, well, why don't you redirect me? instead of fire me, I can do it scarier. And they said, no, 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 we're gonna have other people. And so I said, well, can I audition? And they said, okay. Good for you. So I was pissed. <laughs> I love it. You know, they give you a direction and then they fire you. So I went to the audition like angry. <laughs> and I said, you want it scarier? I'll give it to you scarier! <laughs> And, you know, little did I know I'd be having to sustain that for 200 years, 2,000 years, 10,000 years. <laughs> oh, my and gosh. That's, that's my story. Wow. Wow. Good for you. And what about you? I mean, Coming. you've been around since, I mean, I had dinner I don't, with don't you. remind me. No. You don't already remind. said. No, this is what was really cool. I had dinner with you, Austin, Walter, and I came on when Austin and Walter and Twee left the show, my cast came on, and, but you guys were having these conversations and just the the beginning talks of Power Rangers, it was so interesting. Like, I, I literally, like, you guys know I talk a lot, but I literally was quiet the whole dinner. Like, I was just listening because it was so interesting to me, just the journey that you guys had been together. You know, it was like a family. You'd been through so much. Um, yeah, so marriages, divorces. Yeah. Everything in between. That's how it is on a show. It's been a long 22 years. Yeah. But it's also like it was yesterday. And um, speaking of Austin, you know, he and I, we we kind of bonded when the show started and on on a lot of levels and he came to me and you know this was over you know there's the money and the negotiating thing and he said what should i do and we we reminisced about all of that last night i'm it was really a wonderful yeah. wonderful time yeah last night. yeah yeah so you know not seeing him and hearing what he's been up to for the last 20 two years you know he, he's the youngest ranger that was ever hired austin was 17 years wow, old i didn't know he was that young. what yeah. well, actually he was he was one week from 18 years old yeah and but his contract says he was 18. it was a little post-dated thing that went on but anyway yeah these are tales out of school um, don't tell anybody. Yeah, don't on tell film. anybody. Uh, which are you on? Are we rolling? Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. We're anyway, rolling. <laughs> my story is no different, really, than anybody else's. Respectful of how I got the role of Goldar. Goldar was actually a uh, uh, not not a character that that Tony thought was going to amount to anything. So he kind of handpicked Squat and Babu and uh, you know, Mallow and, and Sorich and, and, and Barbara, these were roles that were obviously very well established when they'd seen what footage they'd seen. But they hadn't seen later footage. So when people talk to me about, and, 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 and Tony you know, said, you, you go ahead and throw some nasty voice on that gold <laughs> monkey. Uh, that we don't think is going to amount to much. Well, as it turned out, it amounted to plenty. And yes, yeah. So it was everything. I had to figure out, you know, when episode seventeen, the five-parter. What is it? Evil, e green, evil, green, green with evil. There you go. You can ask them anything; they know it all. They're like an encyclopedia. Yeah, I know. You, you can just turn to them and say, "Help, help me!" What <laughs> episode thirty-three yeah. was that Green when I? Evil. They'll recite the lines. They'll act it so out. The whole thing. <laughs> Tony came to me. Tony, where you know, again, as everybody's saying, "Oh, we we all know each other all these time." This we all came out of a show called Robotech. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Give them a hand. And. Uh, that's really where this little team of dubbers came from, that show. We were working, literally the show was working 24-7. I would walk out of a studio called Intersound when the sun was coming up, yeah. after having done not just Robotech, but all kinds of different shows. Yeah. Just jumping, there were three studios. You would just be pointed, now you go in and Tom Weiner's doing Around the World in 80 Days, you're gonna go in there and 
I'm playing some role in that and you just start dubbing. And it was lovely. I mean, it was a great, uh, what do you call it, journeyman? Like journeyman. Yeah, we were, we were. We cut our teeth on that. We cut our teeth there. And Tony Oliver, whether you know it or not, um, he was the lead. He, he played Rick Hunter. And yeah. That was, you know, he was a voice actor and an actor, an actor first. All of us are yeah. actors. Yes, um, and a singer. Yeah, and singers. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, there are, two, there are two schools of voiceover or two factions of voiceover. You come out of radio or you come out of acting. All of these people doing this work are out of, from, from acting. We're all actors. So then Tony wound up being on the other side as a producer. So, but he knew all of our work very, very well. So when you ask about the audition process, you know, he handpicked us to do all of these things. And, and finally, go, go, I mean, like Magna Defender, I didn't audition for Magna. I, w I was, you're doing Magna. And, you know, we're like a company, like an acting company. So uh, then I went old down. Old Hollywood. Yeah, yeah old Hollywood. We were a stable yeah. actor. Yeah, we were, uh, what, what, you know, yeah, in-house in studio actors. Um, then I realized. Hey, how are you? Holy crap. Look, you're just passing through. See, this is the thing. When you're at Morphicon, you just don't know who might pop up. That's a hell of a <laughs> <new> thing. <laughs> <laughs> who might just roll through. So this is the thing. I got from a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of these kids, you know, obviously some of them want to be actors, some of them want to be in the production side, but a lot of them want to get into voiceover. Mm -hmm. And what is some of the advice, because you all have obviously sustained a career in voiceover. I mean, you, that, that's your bread and butter. Mm -hmm. How do you, you know, what is, what's the advice that you tell them to prepare in creating their characters or getting their demos ready or, or things like that? Uh, well, I always say, um, make a list of what you think are your best roles, but that, that are what your strong suit would be. And be honest with yourself. If you Absolutely. can't do Australian accents, you know, don't say, oh, I can do everything, you know. Be honest with yourself, and also you have to take an acting class. Because if you can't act, you can't do voiceovers. Mm -mm. And also, you know, being musical is good too, because of timing. It's a lot of timing. A lot of, lot of voiceover people are singers, um, musical comedy or whatever, but you know, they, knew, they know music. But uh, I would say definitely get yourself into an acting class. And again, look at magazine copy, look at things and write it down. See things on TV that you like and get your tape recorder out and just start playing Make it a game for yourself, first of all. Yeah, you got to really go get into the development of, of these voices. Even, yeah. yeah, you know, kind of play with it, right? Yeah, and women can do men like, you know, every man does Sean Connery. That it's, I can't. You know, except for Karen. I can't do Scottish. <laughs> no. I can't do Scottish. But women do can it. do, you know, you can imitate. Don't limit yourself to saying, oh, that's the man voice, you know, because Karen, people have different kinds of rhythms in their voices and just... You have to have a good ear. Yeah, you were. Gonna yeah, say it's a, well, it's uh, you, you, there's there's no wrong answer, and there's tons of great <laughs> advice. Yeah. But there's two things that I would say that you may not even think about. Once you do get hired, always be early. Never be. Good advice. If, if you're on time, you're late. Good advice. And if you're early, you're on time. You know, it's it's that old adage. And be really good at it. Because if you're quick and you can get it done in one or two takes, it saves them a ton of money because they're paying for the time. So if you're good, you will be, be back. And if you're reliable, you will be back. Awesome. That's great advice. Now, is there ever... Yeah. He's absolutely right. That, and if you want to be an actor, even if you want to be on production, it's like the first person on set is the one, you know, you got to pay your dues. So is there ever a character that you didn't get that you were hoping... You were like, I, 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 I put everything into the audition. I got so close. Sure. <laughs> hundred million of them. <laughs> right. Can I just finish up on that last yes, one? Yes, please, please. I want to say something nobody ever answers this, 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 how do you get into, how do you get into, and nobody ever answers what I'm going to say. Nobody ever has this answer. That your confidence 
There's no room for nerves. Eddie, I'm riding on his coattails right now. He just said, go in and do it and do it good. They're looking for, they want you to get the part. They're not interested in going through dozens of people. They want to sure. see that thing, that it, make it happen. But that's not the part that I didn't answer. Now I'm going to tell you the answer, the real answer, I think, that no one ever says. Get into where it's happening. Who is who? Where are the parties? Where, who's the right teacher? Not who's the best teacher. Who's the teacher? Who's the flavor? Where, where are the people that are going to be happening? Can you get in with that group? Roll with the in crowd wherever it is. Don't do a play at some stupid theater. Do a play at the theater <laughs> that everyone wants to do. It, it, it's at the Odyssey. Go audition at the Odyssey. That's where you want to be doing the play. So you get into the scene. Get in the scene. If you're in the scene and you start to get accepted in the scene, you're already rolling. Yeah. Nice. I agree. I agree. All really good advice. You guys taking notes on this stuff? There's going to be a test. I want to take a question from the audience because I know you guys are up and coming actors, aspiring voiceover, you're, you're, you're wanting to get into all that stuff. So I need to, I want a question from you guys because you can get on the mic right there. Yep. Go right ahead. What's your name and where are you from? Hi, I'm, I'm Will and I'm from New York. Hi, oh, Will. nice. Hey. Welcome hey. to Cali. Hey. And I have a question for Barbara. I was wondering... Oh. Um, once you came back onto the show, I was wondering what that process was like coming back for, um, to, to work with Lord Zed and, and how you felt about Rita's makeover. Oh, you mean her, from the Japanese footage to the American? Yeah. Well, you know, when my part was over, I, 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 I tried to campaign to become Rita because I am an actor, you know? Absolutely. So I, I... With Tony's help, I got the costume, and I did my own audition, and I, and I had a little card with me in the costume that said, Out of Work Empress Seeks Employment. <laughs> Can you believe this? She's auditioning. She's auditioning, auditioning for the role that she's already made famous. This is crazy, man. I know. Welcome to Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> but they had a picture in their head that they wanted to do Rita. She looked Asian. She was Asian. They wanted to do someone who looked like her, but a younger version. And there's no way, you know, I've got to be honest with myself, I don't look Asian, you know, what can I say? Oh, come on. <laughs> you know, it's like, like Tootsie, makeup. you know. I could be a woman, I could be taller, I could be... Anyway, um, but I was thrilled that they brought her back. And that was because of the fans saying, you know, they loved Zed. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They loved him a little. They loved you know, Lord a Zed. A little bit there. <laughs> But they decided to, I think they wanted it less sinister at one point, you know, so we became sort of like Lucy and Ricky, you know, we kind of got really yeah. silly with it. So he got less sinister and I got to be back on the show, so I was very happy. <laughs> and I got to dub better because she was an English person, you know, so yeah. it was not And I was hard. getting lost in the shuffle. Oh. Oh. I know. Well, you know, His guys, wings I, got clipped. I really, really thank you all for sitting down, doing uncensored talk. Um, thank you for, you know, talking, uh, you know, talking to the audience. We have one last question. We'll go ahead and take that question. Okay. Uh, first, damn, this is a low mic. Uh, anyway, first and foremost, Karen, you already know you're amazing. This isn't to say just about that. First thank of all, you. Uh, you guys are the soundtrack to my childhood. Absolutely. <laughs> Give <her a> round <laughs> of I agree. <laughs> Yep, like that's the thing. Power yeah. Rangers had so many layers, and you guys are such an integral, intricate layer to the success of the show. What's your question? Uh, my question, well, side note as well, man, that was actually the truest statement you could ever say about not only voiceover, but anything as far as any career. Like, my wife just booked two voiceover gigs because of just that. Like, that's amazing nice. advice. Um, aside from that, and I heard everything that you said, Barbara. Along those lines, what were some of the other super difficult things you guys dealt with on the cast and set of Power Rangers throughout you guys' tenure there? You mean the, the behind the scenes yucky yes. stuff? I need all the behind the scenes. <laughs> all the dirty, dirty. We, we don't, we don't, we don't want to go there. Yeah, yeah. Well, but we did. There's always politics what, and always drama. There's politics, but I have to say that what we did was we became a team and this is a good tip. If you have a fight with those that are your bosses 
And you have some leverage because you are sticking together. Solidarity helps so much. Yeah. And that's how we got things, de- I mean, that's how we dealt with it. We dealt with it as a group with one, you know. And with no ego, no yeah, ego. There's yeah. no room for ego. Yeah. yeah. So, so Leave we, it at the door. But we, you talk about solidarity t- and, and working together and all that stuff. It's been forever and it needs to be totally revamped. But way back in the day, we all got together and we negotiated the first ever foreign yeah. dubbing agreement with the Screen Actors Guild nice. to create yeah. uh, benefits for the journeyman actors who were doing the little jobs, the low Thanks budget to Kerrigan, jobs. Thanks Kerrigan, he did a lot yeah. of we're work proud on of that. that. A lot of work on that. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> we need a raise, Kerrigan. Yeah, we do <laughs> need a raise. They have never raised it though. Yeah, Let's go get guys, a raise. Let's go get a raise on that note. I know, you guys are amazing. They're giving me the signal that we gotta go. So thank you so much for tuning in to Uncensored Talk. Thank you for watching and thank you, Power Morphicon.